Hey guys, Richard here, and let's talk about the reasons why you don't have passion in your life and how to fix it. Now, the reasons why you don't have passion in your life is not inherently because you are somewhat a defective human being or somehow you weren't transferred the genes to have passion in your life or something crazy like that. I'm glad you found this video because we're going to talk about this topic here in depth. If you don't have passion in your life, honestly, I don't know what to say to you other than to tell you that you need to put in effort, time, investment into this to really get this handled. Because I can tell you that if you have this aspect of your life taken care of, that is finding your passion taken care of, then everything in your life is pretty much going to fall in place and other areas of your life is pretty much going to sprout and blossom as a result of this, right? So it's definitely very important that you pull in the time and work that's necessary to figure out this aspect. And the analogy I'm going to use here is the likes of a bomb. So a passionless life is like a bomb that refused and didn't explode. It didn't go off or anything like this. So all the energy that's inside that bomb, none of them really goes into somebody's life. None of them even go into this person's life to really propel them. Whereas the passionate life, the passionate life is that life whereby the bomb glow, goes off, right? So the amount of energy in an explosion pretty much propels that person forward in their lives and their life is moving forward. Now, I hate to make comparison, although life is not ever about comparison, but if we have two people parallel in the same field, one with um, uh, passion and one without passion, who do you think is going to excel more? Obviously, the guy with passion, because what makes a difference here is that the energy that person A is putting into their life differs from the energy that person B is putting into their life. And for that reason, passionate people tend to be a lot more creative people. They tend to be a lot more driven people than passionless people. So guys, I don't know how else to convince you that this is such an important topic that you need to spend whatever amount of time that is required to figure this out and really take care of this for good, right? So I was, I've always wanted to shoot this video, but over the last several months, I've always kind of be thinking about the reasons why people don't really have passion. Because as I looked at society, something really dawned on me that people were just living passionlessly. And this really bothered me. So I've really thought about the reasons here so that, you know, they have point and they have grit and also that they are very honest and really accurate to some degree anyway at least the most deepest profound way i could think about this right so so a couple of the reasons i came up with you might not like it and i think probably that's why most people don't want to hear about this but i think it's going to do you massive good if you really take to heart what i have to say here so the number one reason and probably the most applicable reason is that most people haven't simply explored and experimented enough in their life. So here's what I mean. I mean that most people who find out that they don't have passion in their life at a later stage, now that simply means to me that at some stage in their life, they have decided that they're not going to experiment enough and they've kind of set a comfort zone for themselves. And also they have conformed to whatever standards outside them. For example, society standard, it might be the standards that, you know, to get a job and work in the corporate world and not be bothered. That is the standard that people can set for themselves. But not only that, it includes other areas, right? Sometimes most people will pretty much bury their heads in a corporate job for four or five years without really going beyond that border or beyond that four corners, right? So because of this lack of experience, it really creates in people's minds very limited thinking and the ability to see beyond those four walls. For example, what about if you are a college student, you're perhaps just gone into college for the wrong reasons, or perhaps your parents really sent you there, and you are not really experience, experiencing college in the real way, or even going out there and experimenting and taking different hobbies and just trying different things out. Or maybe as a young adult, if you think about your life, maybe as a young adult, what you perhaps did was you buried yourself playing games. You, you buried your head playing video games all day and you did that exclusively and hung out with friends that really didn't serve you, right? Basically, the bottom line here is that you have been living under the rocks for the last X amount of years and then you need to pretty much accept that that's where you are at. I mean, it's very 
easy, right? I think anyway, to just accept that that's where you are. And it is okay that if you don't have passion now, that you are going to work towards getting passion in your life, so to speak, right? So with that said, what needs to change here? I don't know, I encourage that you continue that path, right? The path of just pretty much going unconscious, right? I really want you to take this other part that I'm going to suggest, which is to start experiencing again, start experiencing with your life and exploring with your life. And to explore with your life, you need to take action and a certain amount of work is required. And the amount of work required, if you're an, an employee, perhaps right now is that you need to switch role with some of your team member. You probably need to switch from one department to another department so that you could experience something different or perhaps even switch companies. Or even make a bold change, like career change, if you have to, right? So that's the work that's required. Now, of course, the question you might say to me, you'd be like, oh, yeah, Richard, this is very easy for you to come up here and say all this stuff to me. Do you know the amount of practical pain that this will cost me? Well, I think the bottom line here is that are you going to use this as an opportunity to actually grow or are you going to make an excuse and say, well, that's too difficult. I mean, I have to change job twice. I have to go up to my manager and ask this. I have to really think about this finance. How am I going to deal with all this financial situation? You could come up with a million reasons why you don't want to do it. But I can tell you that for me personally, finding my passion wasn't an easy thing, right? My passion wasn't given to me right from birth. I spent 22 years, 22 years of hours, hours, honestly, trying to figure out my passion. Now, of course, I wasn't really going through my life trying to figure out my passion, but what happened for me was that I was experimenting with life, right? I was just doing my discovery in life. And what happened was that I came in touch with something that I kind of liked. And for me, that kind of pretty much turned on the switch for me. And ever since that day, my life has been different. So. In a way, you could say that I kind of stumbled, stumbled across my passion, but isn't that what it is, though? Now, one of the couple of objections I hear, I hear people talking about is that, well, look at that guy there over there. He didn't have to work for his passion. Somehow, he was just born with the right genes, with the right talents, with the right gifts. And for also, for some reason that he, you know, his gifts and talents just coincidentally and falls into his passion. So that guy doesn't have to worry. Why can't my life be like that? Why didn't I have that parents that could nurture my gifts and talent and stuff like that? I mean, you could come up with all kinds of reasons, right? But here's what I have to say about that argument. We all as human beings have gifts and talents and skills within us, but I think that it is your responsibility to bring that forth, right? And I think you just by the sheer nature that the way we grew up in our homes, what typically happens is that we don't get most of we don't get the best of parents who can see this aspect or see see some of our skills and help us nurture it. Or maybe even ourselves, we don't even nurture the gifts that we have. Because obviously from at that from that young age, it's very hard to know what gifts we ought to be doing, whatever. But or what can happen also is that as we go from a young person into teenage years and into young adults, we kind of lose touch of what it means to be in touch with something that we love, right? Because honestly, when you're going through that teenage years, you're always concerned about what your friends is doing. So you tend to ignore some of the things that are very personal to you. And then not to mention that a lot of people kind of discourage you from doing what you actually love and they give you comments. So you tend to listen to a lot of people's voices and then you kind of neglect your voice, right? And as I talk about here on this channel, it's about getting on your own true self and being on your own path. So honestly, those are the three reasons, right? So the first reason is that, first of all, your parents either didn't nurture that gift or they, they didn't see it, or you didn't nurture it, or you lost a sense of what you love when you were going through your um, your your young child phase to your young adult phase if that makes sense so that's what i think about this stuff as well and i know a lot of people don't like this arrangement of 
having to pull a lot of work into finding your passion. But honestly, what else do you expect though? What else do you expect? Isn't life about experimenting to find something that you actually identify with? Because honestly, I can tell you that if you find your passion, right, say it has been concealed for a specific period of time. And if you go into that extra effort of right searching through it, that if you find your passion in that process, I can bet you that you'll be a lot more glad uh, that you found it than if it was given to you right off the bat, right? And I think that's it in life, right? So for me, I'm still experimenting with different stuff to see what I can really make out out of this passion that I have currently and go to different layers of it, right? So that's the beauty there, right? And I don't think that finding your passion has to be a very painful process and has to be a process that requires massive amounts of work. Although it does require work, but I don't definitely see it as being a painful type of work. The second reason why most people don't have passion is that, ironically, most people's passion are in front of them, but they are blind to it, right? So they passively question, where's my passion? Somebody give me my passion. I need something to be passionate about. Life will be really great if I'm passionate about something and then they go on this cycle. Meanwhile, their passion is staring in front of them. Now, of course, your question would be, why would anybody even do that to themselves, right? And of course, that leads me to the last point, the third point why most people don't have passion. And it is that most people fundamentally believe that their passion should be easy. It should be effortless. No work is going to be required. So they just wake up one day, they find something that they are passionate about and they just go and do it, right? There's no passion, there's no effort, right? And this misconception is what makes a lot of people not even it makes a lot of people not put in the effort that is required to pull in to, to gain a passionate life, so to speak, right? So they are waiting for something easy to come to them so that they can just do it, right? They are always asking this, themselves, where's my passion? But of course, we know that to create a passionate life requires work. And also to be on Pa uh, to be passionate about your life also requires work, although it's not a painful sort of work, but it's kind of work that you really turn into habit. So your life becomes almost habitual, right? So that's all I have to say about this topic, about finding your passion. I hope uh, to end this video, actually, I'm going to end this video with a personal story of mine. So I'm going to cut this story short and just to give you an overview of what it or the timeline it took me to find my passion and just a brief uh, segment of the things I did in between to the point I am and I consider myself a very passionate person at the moment and you know that feels great it feels amazing I highly recommend so here's my story quickly I remember when I was younger that I got into music right but what happened for me as I went through that kind of teenage phase into young adult phase, what happened is that I was discouraged by people around me and they said all kinds of stuff to me and then I dropped it. Before then though, I also took part in crazy stuff. I went into bicycle repairing and I went into IT, I went into computers, I went into all sorts of things. And then of course I came into Ireland and I went back to music. In that music, I started off as a rapper, believe it or not. I did rapping for a bit and then I entered a um, music production. After music production, I was kind of partly satisfied with it. And then I went into piano. I mean, think about this, all this, I'm not just talking about just doing this for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. I did these things essentially for almost six months and then I switched and then, then I did some for years even. Piano, I did that for almost two years. And then what really kind of, unfold for me. Meanwhile, I was in college, actually. So while I was in college, I was still trying to juggle music at the side. So what happened was, I think one summer, I released a mixtape. And this was after putting three months of almost eight hours every single day, my summer months, I pretty much dedicated it to this mixtape that I have on YouTube somewhere. And what happened was that I kind of I gave people the music to listen to and then they were coming back to me. They were like, you know what, Richard, the voice is not really that great. So what I kind of discovered that I needed to improve my voice. And in the process of actually going out there to improve my, my voice, 
I kind of came across singing. And now, after doing singing, trying to improve my voice for a good bit, I kind of start falling in love with the art of actually singing, right? And then I said, wow, this is actually so cool. You, you get so much enjoyment out of this. And then over time from doing that, that just gave me so much pleasure. And now for me, my passion in my life right now, or at least the purpose of my life is to actually connect musically and through the art of singing, right? And that's been a passion in my life. And I think that nothing in my life has been able to stir up that much passion and just that much curiosity to actually grow up to be the best version of myself so again as i said in all other of my videos that this has really kind of bled to other areas of my life so things like my fitness i take it so seriously these days things like my what i put into my mind i take it very seriously and just the educational stuff i share here on youtube i take that seriously and this is as a result of the journey i had to take remember why i said 22 years to figure this out now of course yours might be shorter yours might be longer but either ways it doesn't matter whether you figure out your passion today or next year but again it's about being on the journey and i want to encourage you to stick to the journey and keep riding it away all right that's it for this video leave me your comment down below i'd like to hear what you think about this video and yeah that's it all right guys thanks bye